Okay, hey guys. Before I get into how I designed a studio and a production pipeline for animation, I want to just quickly talk to you about the Animator Guild Film Festival. Uh, working title. I, I think you could also call it the Animator Guild Film Challenge. The basic premise of this is that you have one year starting from now. A year on from now we're going to show all these films in sort of a big online stream. There's going to be a prize given. If you have been wanting to make an animation, this is your excuse to go and make that animation. We're going to set regular checkpoints to check up on people to see where they're at with their animations and then it just gives you that deadline at the start of February next year in 2020 to hand your animation in and to get it seen and celebrated. It's going to be showcased on the Animator Guild community which is a new channel that I've set up and it's an online community that's on Discord. If I have made you interested, if I've caught your attention with this pitch you should go to animatorguild.com i've set up a page where you have all the rules all the information about it so uh yeah one animation one year minimum of one minute for the animation runtime and you'll get it shown uh, in the new year and it's a great excuse to make that animation that you've always wanted to make So a bit of context about me, right now I am a one-man studio, I create everything. Clients come to me with videos that they want made and I take it uh, often from the early conceptualization where they don't actually have a lot yet. I'm kind of like a creative partner with them, I, um, I help them plan it all out, storyboard it and then see it all the way through to the end production. So really, I am a studio contained within one person but when I want to expand my output and create more animations, it's very important that I'm able to outsource certain things and to create a team around me where I'm able to uh, delegate certain tasks to them or work within a team and that will massively expand an output. So here, I basically did the thought experiment of like, what would it look like to have a 10 man team, 10 people, all helping to create an animation. How would you manage that? What would the space look like around that? That's the video. Uh, enjoy. So here is my rudimentary design for a 10-man animation studio production pipeline. I thought it would be fun to design this based on studios I've visited and also speculation over what I imagined would be the optimum environment for a small team to have a very efficient 2D animation pipeline. A studio is a creative business and businesses are a bit like organisms. They have different organs which provide different functions to make the whole thing work. This is just a very functional studio layout. I haven't made it too fancy but the basic blueprint could be developed further to have more features and to be more welcoming. First of all I'll briefly explain the layout. We have the main room where production happens. We have the essential coffee bar, which is the engine of the whole studio. Without that, everything grinds to a halt. <laughs> this is the main room for production. This is where the pipeline all takes place. I'll get into the details of that soon. Then you have the ideation room. This room is for generating ideas and group discussions. So it has a giant whiteboard which covers a whole wall and a giant cork board and a round table. But really this, this blueprint is more for the production and not for the pre-production. I believe that natural light is a crucial element to any creative environment, so many of the walls would ideally have full head-to-toe window panes to let in a lot of light. Okay, so now let's talk about the workers. Every worker has a special role, but everyone also has a generalist skill set and has an understanding of every part of the pipeline. This makes the workforce very fluid. When a certain department isn't needed, a member of that department can help in a different aspect of the, of the production. 
at certain times roles of the production process won't have any work to do so in those times they would switch over to working on a task that would be needed at that time. The studio work floor is designed to maximise what I think are the two essential aspects of an effective production pipeline, communication and deep focus. This layout is designed to make in-person communication incredibly easy. Nothing beats in-person communication, it's instant and there are never any technical malfunctions that you get over text and communication over the phone. There is tone of voice and body gestures which actually means that there is more information and more subtlety being communicated in the time given and it also reduces the distraction of having an instant messenger screen present all the time on your monitor or in the background. All of the team is within hearing range of each other so they don't need to move from their desks to update and to be updated on progress or questions and answers. The layout is also designed for the artists to be able to reach deep focus and easily stay focused for long periods of time, a major aspect which can get overlooked in studios. Each artist has nothing in their forward facing vision to distract them. Each one has a screen which they can pull up to block the artist next to them when they enter deep focus. No one walks in their peripheral vision as well. For equipment, each worker has their own desk and a tablet of their choice. In front of them there is a large TV monitor with Chromecast. All of them are linked to this so anyone can throw up anything on the screen and this can be helpful for the director so the director can instantly share references, diagrams and other things that can help the team. It's another way that the director or any member of the production team can communicate with visuals. Instead of the old, I'll find the link later and email it to you, which wastes time. I've also thought about maybe them all being linked up to a local area network but similar results can be achieved with cloud technology and strong internet connection. Now let's go through the roles. So the producer sits here separated from the production team but with a vantage point that can see what everyone is working on. It's a great position to keep track of progress. During production the producer's main work will be filling in tiles mostly but this is a really important job. Basically by doing this you can forecast the work progress and make sure that everyone is on schedule. As well as this, the producer would be handling communications. This could be clients for commercials or if it's an animated series they're working on, it can be talking to executive producers and broadcasters. In a studio of this size, the producer might double as a sales rep, negotiating with prospect clients, arranging time which fits with the studio schedule and negotiating prices. So it's a lot of work to be doing. So the producer can also have an assistant here. Together they can help to handle those tasks as well as handling things like the finances going in and out and of all the paperwork that comes with that, making sure that each animator is paid for example. The storyboarder slash director sits here where he has two immediate points of contact with the layout artist and a key animator. He mostly communicates with the layout artist here explaining what he had in mind for each shot so that then the layout artist can handle the logistics of the storyboards. The layout artist can also start to clean up the detail with the background elements making sure that the perspective is correct which will help to prepare the background painter. Once the layout artist has done that job, he can send the layouts over to the background painter and they should be clear enough so that the painter can get to work. The layout artist has communication with the compositor who at this point won't have much work to do unless they are crafting a detailed animatic so the compositor can assist the layout artist at this point. An alternative strategy that a lot of studios do nowadays, instead of having their, say, their compositor work on a different aspect of the pipeline, they will actually hire, let's say, the compositor for a temporary contract lasting as much as this work lasts. So he's only brought onto the scene when the work starts for him. That's done a lot nowadays, especially in a, in a lean studio model. 
It's also important that further down the line, the layout artist can communicate his vision and his technical understanding with the compositor. The rest of these are quite obvious and don't need me to explain. So you have the key animator, then you have another key animator, animation assistant, and then a second animation assistant. The animation assistants can do things like in-betweens and cleanup, painting, adding shadows and things like that. And then the key animators will do a lot of the rough key animation. I'll talk a bit about bottlenecks here. Bottlenecks are always a priority in animation production and it's important that they're given priority when we're thinking of how to make this whole thing run smoothly. A bottleneck is something that holds up production that production can't move forward until the bottleneck is addressed. Sometimes the answer for this is just to wait it out and sometimes you can tactically shift things around so that the bottleneck isn't as much of a problem. Probably the biggest bottleneck for this production is the storyboard artist slash director. No one can really do anything without the storyboard so it is important that the storyboard artist is the first to start and works quickly and decisively. So about this, Studio Ghibli are famous for making the bold and daring move of working on production of films long before the storyboard is finished. This is a big risk because you are counting on the storyboarder to get it right first time and not need to backtrack. With a visionary like Hayao Miyazaki, this has worked quite well for them. But if you look at a studio like Pixar who go through countless iterations of the film and typically finish the whole animatic before moving on to production, this might not work quite as well. So weighing up these two options, on the one side you have a high risk option that is low budget and is much faster. And on the other side you have the expensive time consuming method studios like Pixar would probably choose but they are more safe and you aren't risking that the whole production staff is wasting time. You're not wasting time with the production staff on something that might be then changed later. There's also a bottleneck between the layout artist and the background artist. The background artist needs layouts before he can start painting. There's also a bottleneck when it comes to the compositing. So what you might see compositors do in a studio is uh, create a sort of rough cut of the composited animation using unfinished keyframe animation, uh, layouts, drawings instead of the painted backgrounds and things like that just to give the rest of the team a visual image of what they're working on and then bit by bit they swap out the unfinished pieces of animation and drawings for the finished rendered pieces until they have a finished image. Okay guys, so that is my design for a 10-man animation studio. I'd be really interested to know what you think about it, especially if you work in a studio of this kind of size, or maybe if you work in a larger studio, a smaller studio. It is certainly informed by studios that I've visited. Also added in a few little ideas of my own in there that uh, are maybe not quite as conventional as my animation business gradually expands i might actually start to put some of these ideas in place this is a model that i'm updating all the time that i'm just adding new information to so any wisdom in this regard uh, would really help me so if you leave a comment down below about your insight into that i just want to tell you quickly about the new channel the second channel that launched very recently so this channel is like a community channel it's, it's for animators of all kinds uh, to come and showcase their work participate in challenges for us to all improve our craft together. You can join the Animator Guild community. It's a new YouTube channel and it's a Discord group. I am on Patreon if you, if you enjoy these videos, if you benefit from them and you want to support this channel so that I can continue making videos long into the future and improve the quality of these videos, then I would really appreciate any support on Patreon. Uh, the link to that is also down in the description. Well, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.